Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week, ice fishing makes its triumphant return to southern New England. Also, the weather kept a lot of boats off the water, so there's not a lot of saltwater reports, but open water options are still in play on Cape Cod. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, I'm going to announce the winners of my needlefish contest. It was really great to get these submissions from you guys. I'm going to try to continue to do these things. I've already got one in the works for February. I'm probably not going to be giving away three because these are a little bit more difficult to make, but there'll be more details on that on a forthcoming report. Uh, for this week, or for this one, for January, um, I had three that stood out above the rest. The first one was from Bo Bosley with a really nice holdover striped bass. The second one was from Devin LaCroix with a very impressive uh, holdover striper. I believe it was taken from the Housatonic River. Um, definitely looks to be in the upper 30 pound range, maybe even pushing close to 40. So that's a, that's a very exceptional uh, wintertime striped bass. And the last one was a beautiful brown trout caught by a guy who didn't give me his name. So uh, I have an email into him and I'm just waiting for a response. but. Uh, those three guys are going to take home one of my uh, coveted flak glide needlefish. Congratulations on that, and thanks to everybody who participated. As we head over into Massachusetts, again, like I said in the intro, there hasn't been a single saltwater report, not even a holdover striper this week. Unsurprising, really, just considering the weather. Had some crazy wind, really cold temperatures. Um, so we're kind of split between ice fishing and some open water fishing. Ice fishing has been really good inland um, and I haven't heard of any one lake or region where it's been particularly awesome. I have heard some good reports from my old stomping grounds in Westboro and Hopkinton, Mass where uh, Whitehall has been really good and so has the A1 site which coincidentally was the lake I grew up on. My house, my backyard backed right up to that pond uh, pretty much my entire childhood so I know it well. Great place for ice fishing, a lot of flags in there and um, so that's one place that's been very good. As you head south and east, things get a little dicier. I'm pretty much going to say east of Route 24 and uh, south of 495. Not really going to find a lot of safe ice in that region. Really anywhere in that sort of approach to Cape Cod. Um, I know some of the ponds are iced up, but most of them are not safe. Um, and even the ones that are in that sketchy zone, you know, you get two and a half inches and, you know, maybe if you don't jump up and down too much, you might be safe. Um, but there's still a, lot of open water, still a lot of open water options on the Cape. I think due to just the really cold weather and the really strong wind, I haven't heard a single report from a guy fishing in a boat out there. So I really haven't heard many uh, reports that weren't trout reports. A few guys taking some fish on shiners. Uh, small largemouth and some of the bog ponds out there, but just about everybody's targeting trout. Good news is just about everybody's catching trout. Um, these fish are staying active even when there's been skim ice around the edges. The trout bite has stayed good. And um, actually, while we're talking about that, why don't we take a look at a little project that I put together with Tim Smith from The Fisherman and Ian McPartland from the, the Goose Hummock Shop. Take it away. When you think of a wintertime fishing getaway, you're probably thinking of somewhere warm, but if that doesn't fit your budget, or if you don't like to fly, or if you just don't have the time for it, you can head out to Cape Cod on the cheap, especially in the off season. Uh, the hotels are cheap, the ponds are well stocked, there's almost a thousand ponds on Cape Cod. Everything's covered, the fishing's great, and it's an easy run. With nearly a thousand ponds, and many of them well stocked, the Cape offers some of the best sweetwater fishing you'll find anywhere in the Northeast. If you're going to make the trip, here's what you need. If you want to be fishing the Cape Freshwater, something like this will get the job done. We have a 2500 Sedona on here, so the entry level of Shimano's and the St. Croix Triumph. Uh, great warranty from these guys. I absolutely love the action. I think this is a 6'6 medium light power, so it kind of does everything. I can do light bass and heavy trout stuff with it. You can walk with one combo and just love it. 
So at the Goose, we have a uh, bunch of options for waders, so keeping yourself warm in these conditions. So we got a lot of frog togs on the more entry level. We got Sims on the nicer stuff. Uh, I definitely keep a nice pair of warm sweatpants underneath and usually double up on my layer of socks, uh, a hoodie, and then like a nice winter jacket, uh, probably with a nice warm beanie as well, just to keep yourself warm or you're gonna be out there for a couple hours. So I, I think Dave and I both are fans of the sling pack. I do it a lot for like my, my lighter uh, saltwater schoolie action in the spring too. Uh, and just with one tray and a couple of packs of probably like the Gary Yamamoto's or a little Kitex, and it allows me to, uh, to walk and cast and keep my hands free, you know? As we know, uh, the Cape is riddled with tons of kettle ponds. So we're hunting, we're kind of uh, walking around, which is why the waders are gonna be critical and the gear is kind of critical because we have to search for the bite um, and we're kind of walking and casting and walking and casting. So you gotta cover ground to find these fish, um, which is plentiful. We got a lot of uh, browns, brookies, rainbows that are all stocked on the Cape. We also have a lot of uh, good smallmouth and monster pickerel in these uh, Cape Cod ponds in the wintertime can be very good as well. So you can log on to massfishandhunt.com uh, and you can get all your freshwater licenses. Mass Fish and Hunt is a great resource for acquiring your license, but it's also great um, for a resource for, for finding what fish or uh, what ponds are stocked. So we can search on a search engine on massfishandhunt.com and you can find out and narrow down to your uh, most productive areas. I cannot preach these Baker jerk baits. This is just shy of three inches and I have caught everything on it. Uh, the crackleback color is an absolute must for me. It's in my top three freshwater lures, period. Um, they got great hooks, they cast really well, and they catch everything from a huge largey to a little perch. I just uh, swear by them, and they're 10 bucks, so it's, you know, it doesn't make you broke in the process. And these are the TRD ticklers from Z-Man. This is the moon ring color, and it's kind of like a, a pink, bluey, purpley hue. Um, and then in the standard TRDs, I was using, they call this smelt color, and it's kind of a, an off silver and white. And uh, these are both uh, highly productive lures, um, and they last a really long time. The TRDs don't tear, they catch a million smallies on one. So, good value. So the line that I use on most of my freshwater setups are either 10 pound or 15 pound. This J8 casts phenomenally well, really quiet through the guides, gets a rear cast. And then across the board, I pretty much use eight pound. This is a Seaguar Blue label. Very common, uh, everybody's got it. And eight pound works great for uh, a mixed variety. Anything other than a big pickerel is gonna do pretty well for Cape Cod Ponds. Bunch of little accessories. I like to have a good set of seven inch pliers. I also like to have forceps too, because sometimes these trout are really sensitive and they choke the hook really deep. If you don't wanna keep it, um, we're trying to do as little as damage as we possibly can. So uh, that helps in um, healthy catch and release fishery here. We're trying to keep them off the shore and off the rocks uh, to keep the slime on the trout. So I do use a, a rubber net that just help in, uh, help in do, let, doing less damage to the trout and um, getting them back there and swimming healthy. Down here at the Goose Hummock, uh, we got guys that can definitely help you out. I've been fishing here my whole life. So the hours of freshwater ponds I've spent is in the thousands. Um, and I will transfer my knowledge down to you guys to help you out. You have many choices when it comes to where to stay. Places like the Ocean Edge Resort to the charming accommodations at the Cove Motel. And of course, there are Airbnbs and VRBOs all over the place. A quick web search will put you on the right path. Even though it's the off season, there are many great restaurants to stay open year round and you won't have to wait in those insane summer lines. And if your travel companion is not a fisherman, they can explore the quaint town of Chatham Hike or bike on the numerous trails, there's tons to do for everybody. And because the Cape juts out into the Atlantic Ocean, the ponds out there rarely ever freeze, so there's almost always open water options for any angler. So if you've got cabin fever, and you feel like you just gotta get out and do some fishing, escape to the Cape where you can enjoy the great outdoors. So that gives you a little look at um, the type of fishing that's going on. We didn't get a lot of really nice fish that day. Uh, in fact, the better fish were caught before the camera was on, which is, I guess, <laughs> the way it goes. Um, but the fishing's very good. They're hitting a variety of lures. You can get them on, you can get them on almost anything. But we were doing really well on small jerk baits, and uh, we were doing really well um, also on Ned rigs. You can get them on live baits. You can get them on flies. There's a lot of different ways to hook up. Bite's been very good. Uh, 
outside of that, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on in Massachusetts. And that's the story that I got for you guys for this week. The story remains the same in Rhode Island. Um, we had so much wind and so much just painfully cold weather this week that almost no boats went out to check around Block Island. And everything I heard was sort of secondhand information. Uh, so, you know, there's been some codfish out there from the few boats that went out there. There's still a ton of sea bass out there which have to be thrown back. Still some scup around as well. Um, but not a lot of boats made the run this week, so I don't have a lot of details. Hopefully we get a we get some calming of these winds uh, this week and we can get some, some more uh, specific information for next week. Uh, a lot of the holdover striper spots that were just starting to kind of give up better fish this week are now skimmed over with ice, so you're not getting many reports from there. Um, there are a few ponds in Rhode Island that have safe ice inland. You know, you're going to want to go 10, 15 miles in from the shoreline uh, before you're going to find any ponds that I would consider walking on. Um, but as is the case with all ice fishing, you know, those first couple weeks after they harden up is always the best. Um, those fish are eager to eat. And, um, you know, if you're out there, regardless of how you fish, whether you're jigging or you're uh, throwing tip ups in, uh, you're going to do well. But that's really the story that I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. And as we move over into Connecticut, uh, there's been a lot of excitement around ice fishing in Connecticut because the coves on the Connecticut River are now safe. Um, we've had a few warm days, but I don't think that's going to have a huge effect. We still have some really cold nights, and uh, it's keeping that ice thick and hard. Uh, so what I've seen... Good panfish reports, lots of pickerel, um, some bass, the occasional striped bass, and a very good pike bite. Uh, got several pictures this week of really nice pike being taken. Uh, some of them neglected to give me a name. Um, others, like Karen Broach, sent me this nice photo of a release uh, of a pike release. A lot of good fish caught this week, and again, that is very typical. You know, when the ice first gets safe, that's always when the best bite is, and um, that seems to hold especially true for the pike bite on the Connecticut River. Uh, ponds are safe pretty much north of 95. You may need to go a little further north than that, but um, coastal ponds are still iffy at best. Uh, definitely want to kind of test your way out with the spud if you're going to try one. Uh, Who's the tonic has been much slower from what I've been hearing. Um, we'll hear a little bit more from Max about that at the end. Uh, but overall, the holdover striper fishery has slowed down considerably this week. But it's hard to know whether that's more a facet of lower effort because of the weather or if the fish are just kind of starting to tighten the lips up a little bit because it's cold. Um, the Farmington River, too, I talked to Derek from Connecticut Fish Guides, and he said he thinks ice fishing should be our focus for the next couple weeks because even places like the Church Pool on the Farmington River are ice straight across and there's really not a lot of places where you're going to catch fish on the Farmington right now so they're kind of in a holding pattern for trout right now unless you can get on some of the smaller streams that have faster water and they aren't frozen yet. Um, so now let's throw it over to Max from Fisherman's World. We haven't heard from him in a while. He said there's a few things going on out their way. Take it away Max. We finally had some herring move in and guys are catching well. Some days guys were pouring 30 catches, 10, 12, 40, but you just gotta get there, out there and try. Locally, the Nautilus Harbor has been the best bet. Guys have been fishing places like behind the Maritime Center, up above the 95 Bridge in Vets Park, and then Calf Pasture Beach off the pier, and then near the Coast Guard Station. Guys are getting them in also in the mouth of the Saugatuck. You can fish right underneath the 95 Bridge. Using a Sabiki rig with like a diamond jig, dipsy sinker, or Castmaster on the back works well. First light and last light has been the best. And then on the striped bass, everybody's focused on the Housatonic. I know it's cold this time of year, but guys are getting some nice catches. We've seen fish in like the mid 40 inch range, but your average fish is like mid slot or right below slot. Fishing upriver above the Merritt Bridge is your best bet this time of year. Remember, you need a freshwater license for that. Fishing soft plastics on lead heads like half ounce, three quarters, and guys will go down all the way to a three eighths. Things like sluggos, paddle tails, I mean, really anything that wiggles. It's a real slow retrieve this time of year. 
And the guys from the boat, they're throwing the same thing. But they like to throw a lot of like A rigs with small paddle tails on the back, Kitex, all that stuff worked well. Thanks and good luck. Thanks, Max. Always appreciate your videos. Good to see you back, uh, back behind the camera or back in front of the camera. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from you again next week. That's the story that I have for you guys this week. It's been a cold, windy week. Not a lot of reports getting in, but the ice fishing has been phenomenal. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to the website and check out some of the free content we have there. We cover the entire northern east coast, from Maryland all the way up to Maine. We have reports and articles to cover that. we got videos to fill in the blanks in between. Um, if you're not interested in subscribing, at the very least, give me a like here on YouTube. And click that little bell down there so you get a notification we, uh, when we post something new. And subscribe to the channel. And last but not least, don't forget, you don't have to watch these videos to get the latest fishing reports. You can also listen to my voice on a podcast. Just go to iTunes or wherever you go to get your podcast. Type in The Fisherman Magazine and you should be able to tap, your, tap and click your way in from there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.